Ron Howard's coming in. Yes, I found out from a text from Steve yep. that woke me up. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> During my fucking final few minutes of sleep that you, you're like, ah, this is, you know, I'm still in bed and I have this much time. And, <sighs> man, yeah. Ron Howard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks. I, I would, I would, I don't know. I would like to defend you on that. But in, in this day and age, you got to turn that cell phone day off at age. night. I did. There's but too if, much going on with the cell phone. The vibrate was on and I was in that that state, that in between, right. and it went mm. on my dresser. Mark. Go quiet mode, my my brother. Nah, I, kinda, I, kinda, I need I need uh, someone's dead uh, uh, nah. information. You yeah. need someone's dead info. You dummies that keep your phones on just in case someone uh, dies in the middle of the night. You're just not you smart. Can't. They're gonna they'll be waiting for you when you wake up in the morning. And trust me, I've <laughs> they're been, not gonna come back to life. Don't worry. I've been through three or four in the last five or six years, and guess what? Mm. It's a horror show, so the best thing you can do is get a, a good night's Just sleep. Just sleep, sleep through it. Yeah, yes. Before you go into uh, deep depression for for two weeks, <laughs> it, trust me, you won't be sleeping. So the best thing you can do is turn off all your phones. You'll wake up with a nice night's sleep. Then you get the bad news. Then the bad news comes, and you're well rested. <laughs> you're well rested and ready to. To deal with it. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not even joking. It's the way to go. I don't know, man. I'm it's... one of those. i got to at least have some line of communication well, what, open. But what could you possibly do? Nothing. See, You're right. You really got to break it down. Break it down. And, break and, and, down. And ask yourself, what could I do if the person is, is dead anyway? Yeah, you're right. The only thing I'm not is saying you're wrong. The yeah. only thing is what there's some uh, horrific accident and they need you to you know to save this well, that, person. Well, that you know something like that. <laughs> do you got some kind of rare blood type? Maybe or, you know. Or do you have the serum in your safe at home? <laughs> yes, the, my serum. <laughs> what the fuck, man? The antidote. I hold the antidote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm one of those guys that need kind of to be connected and shit. So, mm. uh, yeah, I. Uh, no, I, 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 on. I go quiet mode. But you know, I don't sleep the night ever. I never get eight straight hours. So if I if I wake up in the middle of the night, I do a little rollover and I, I take a quick look at the phone. Like, okay, all all's good. Dude, and here's what I got to do. I'll I'll show you a prime example of how fucking like much I I really much help I need mm -hmm. getting up. Here's my alarm. I have it set for four thirty a.m. four thirty five four forty. 450. Good God. Those are the times I would set. Then I have my clock radio alarm also set for 450 mm. as like kind of an emergency backup if the iPhone alarm uh, doesn't work. The iPhone plugs in to my clock radio on my uh, night table. So, But I set five alarms on my uh, iPhone. Are you knocking them out every time? Uh, How many yeah, do you go as, through before you... Go, I go through all five. I wait, and then I wake up at, uh, you know, I'm up. So I wake up at uh, 4.40, like that. And then sometimes if I'm just like, oh, my God, I need 10 more, I'll wait for the 4.50 one. But, um, yeah. Yeah, you're... That, yeah. God bless you. I have the my, Bose, the one you have up, that, yeah, that, well, that, that concert volume. Yeah, yeah. But it's all concert done through, it's all it done through a remote. Yep. Yeah. So if your remote batteries are running out, which apparently mine are... <laughs> uh oh <laughs> It's getting louder and louder and louder and louder, and I'm hitting the remote button, and nothing's <laughs> happening. It won't turn off. I almost had to put it in the tub. <laughs> With you in it, I hope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> just, the neighbors must love that. <laughs> oh, boy. I hope they weren't lousy. <laughs> oh, this pose. This oh. pose is ridiculous. It's like when you're in a, a hotel room, and next door to you at 4 in the morning... And the room is vacant, oh. and someone set the fucking alarm and left it on, and you're like, "How about you got to call downstairs?" Screw that! How about you're in a hotel room, nice, you want to sleep in, you're on vacation, or you got a day off, and you forget to check the alarm clock in your room, yeah, yeah, and, and you find out goodie. that <laughs> the day before some fucking continental, air, you know, air, airline pilot was uh, was in there. Got to be to the airport at three a.m. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh shit. All of a sudden, it goes off at like some <laughs> ungodly hour. Yeah, and then you can't get back to sleep. Uh, Jersey Matt Bayonne, thank God Opie's not the president because we'd be in deep shit if we're attacked at night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My advice to Obama: he takes the hotline off the hook. <laughs> yeah, eh, fuck this. I what could possibly happen? <laughs> it's my logic, you know. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I need my sleep. No yeah, matter what? Sleep is very, very important. I gotta give it to there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's pretty cool, Ron Howard. Coming in uh, absolutely later on. 
And I guess uh, intern David, he's only got three days left with us. Three days left. He has just been, you know, an intern. Uh, of course, yes, he's been on the air and, and gave us so many chuckles. But as far as taking claim to this, what did he say? He said that he's uh, taking credit for getting the Ron Howard booking done. For real. Now, how? Get Sam, because Sam started this. I don't know. I... I before we get into that, David came in, and he's got three days left, so I was trying to give him a little a little advice, considering I've been doing this radio thing since I was 18. Well, just, son. Just a few little things. Nothing. Let me tell you, my boy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you were giving him the old pat on the back? Yeah, I wasn't trying to be, like, you know, old douche trying to say, I, you know, this is how. Uh, <laughs> you remind me a lot of me <laughs> when I was a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> just a few little dumb pointers. That's it. <laughs> Nothing special. Yeah. And I'm talking to him, and then he finally left the studio, and I look at Ann, and I go, I think I had better conversations with I, with my six year old niece. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was amazing. I was like, I was, I was like, what am, I, what am I talking to? I gave him a pat on the back, leave, leaving the other day just for the fuck uh. of it, and he <laughs> winced. He winced in a way like I had fucking stabbed him. He's fantastic. Do we I have love just touching him. It's great. We have to get a video of his winces. Uh, oh, I, I think we do have have some. But how did he claim? To have yeah. any involvement yeah, Sam, what's in the on? Ron Howard booking. You're he, his handler, so what's going on? He, he couldn't get that done if his name was David Howard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he co-booked uh, him. You co-booked. There's, there's something called co-booking? Yeah, well, I mean, Ron Howard's a, kind of a big celebrity. Well, uh, I think his name is attached to a few uh, popular projects yeah. over the years. Sure. So, I mean, sometimes it takes a tandem. Oh, get tag team, down. kind of a. Was it a good cop, bad cop? I guess so. Yeah, get on, do the fucking show. Oh, you know, don't, don't pay attention to him. We'd really like you to do the show. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what do you need two people for a booking? <laughs> well, you know, Liam is our booker. Yes. And so, does a great job. Does a fine yes, job yeah. in getting us very good, entertaining guests. Yeah. But uh, I guess he couldn't get the job well, uh, done by himself. But let it be known, we still miss the Roland. Yes. Right. The Roly Poly Roland. But Who doesn't miss Roland. Sometimes Your Liam needs. Dog is still dead, Roland. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Classic line that was. There are woof, woof. Fuck Roland. you. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was classically brutal. <laughs> How's your dog? <laughs> <laughs> we might have to play that. Oh, it's so good. Roland knew how to fight. Oh, did he fight dirty? God, he was a, a timid little little thing, large thing. You'd hear him laugh when you tickle him. <laughs> and he's just like, okay, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then he gets in a fight, and he's just like, fuck your mother. Yeah. Fuck her, fuck everything. Else. Unbelievable. Wow, he's brutal. Yeah, he's bad. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'd like to know how this tandem tag team because booking... Like, you need somebody from the show to make sure that the booker is, is on his game. You know what I mean? All right. And usually, I mean, David said that usually it would be the executive producer, but sometimes somebody needs to come and fill in for the executive producer when he's not getting the job done. So why wouldn't somebody else fill in for the executive producer, maybe a paid employee, somebody that maybe yourself, I was going to say, yeah, meaning you, Sam. Sam, maybe you yourself. Know, it's the thing. He picked up the ball and ran with it, didn't he? That's what happens. I mean, I, I dropped the ball and David picked it up. Uh, I Thank start, God. I want to start by asking Thank God. David. Uh, sometimes uh, Steve drops the ball? Yes, that's true. He does sometimes, <laughs> yes. In what way? You got an example? Uh, he just doesn't like do a good job uh, job booking things. Like even today he dropped the even today he dropped the ball. I heard there's a big I heard there's a big mix up today. <laughs> What? All right. Yeah, 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 there was there is a bit of a mix up. I heard a little panic a big mix uh, up today. What is yeah. What's the mix because, up? Uh, mix up. Apparently Steve C booked uh Andrew Dice Clay for the show today, but he's booked at the exact same time that Ron Howard is booked for oh, today. No. 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 Yeah. no. Yeah. no. Yeah. Oh, why did he do that? I don't get it. Why did he do that? Together. <laughs> yeah, so that's not that's a that's commotion, true. yes. What? Promotion? Yes. yes. What's commotion. that have to do with prom yeah. oh. commotion? But it's a promotion. No, commotion. Yeah. Oh. Commotion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so what, are, what should we do about that? Because yeah. Steve hasn't really come up with a solution yet. No, no. no he hasn't. So no, he what hasn't. should we do, David? I think we should uh, make uh, make Mr. Mr. Andrew Dice Clay wait. Uh, wait and That's... Wow, I can't wait to tell Dice. 
<laughs> that intern David, a fellow Jew, Ron yeah, told you, your you to wait. Your idol, Opie. You're named after him. You got to have him right <laughs> when he comes. Sure. Let's relax. Now you got to have him. As a... He's not my idol. Yeah. Oh. I, I had some idols growing up, but not oh. Ron Howard. I just looked like the guy. And then and, and because of that asshole, I, 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 I'm a middle-aged man with the name Opie, okay? Let's 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 be real about this. Uh, when I was 12, it, it's kind of sounded it's all, all right. It's all cute. Yeah, it's all cute and cuddly <laughs> until you start growing pubic hairs and realize you're stuck with this name for the rest of your life. Dude, just be grateful. Was it Goober or something else? It could have been a lot worse than Opie. Oh Gomer. God. Well, they were thinking how to. I told you how it went down, right? Oh, I was my in, God. I think I was in seventh or I think seventh grade and this girl julie burson i give her credit every single time she she pointed me out as we're waiting for the teacher she goes hey you what's your nickname i go i don't have a nickname she made me stand in front of the class and then have everyone try to figure out my nickname on the spot and everything from howdy duty to will robinson from lost in space oh wow to, uh four <laughs> eyes because i was wearing glasses Just four the, eyes is so those, those are only heck. those are the ones i remember and there were brutal <laughs> even more brutal ones in there and then she finally just looked at me and goes opie thank that's god a, god a bit hot cock should have flown out so much <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank god i was still be would uh, would have been knocking 10 because I never would have signed on to the Howdy Doody and Anthony <laughs> show. <laughs> or the Four Eyes and Anthony show. Four Eyes and right. Anthony. have to wear glasses even though he had the corrective surgery. <laughs> yeah. But if, if, yeah. If oh, it, it would become a gimmick to have to wear them with no glass in them. But if they called me Howdy Doody, I would have, I would have, I would have been probably stuck with that name somehow. Yeah. I probably would have been Howdy by this point. Or, or you'd cool it up by just A-H-D. Yeah. It's H-D. What does H-D stand for? Howdy Doody. <laughs> well, well, that's what the fans do. Yeah. When they yeah. say O-N-A. Because I know, guys. Trust me, I know. It's hard to say Opie and Anthony. Cause, O-N-A. Because the Opie part is pretty It's literally hard brutal. to say it. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. So I know the people that are trying to be a little cool and go, yeah, O-N-A. O-N-A. I know what that's right. about. We get it. All right. Anyways, back to you. Not my idol there, David. Yeah. But oh, okay. Now, I, mean, I was, respect the guy and i loved a lot of the stuff he's done i want to know how you give me a fucking timeline like they're showing with that airplane crash uh and and transcripts of how you actually helped uh book this uh okay <laughs> um well it was uh last friday mm, wow it goes back that far okay yes it goes back to last friday yes and uh opie was Discussing on this very show about Mr. Ron Howard. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. yes. It's almost like I was sitting here. Yes, yes, how about that? Yeah. He was discussing how he saw him at a Starbucks. Uh huh. <laughs> right. I, I know the story, David. Yes, yeah, so he so, said that he wanted Ron Howard on the show. Right. So I said, well, if he wants Ron Howard on the show, we better get him on the show. <laughs> See, this is this is what you get with intern David. There's no Steve C saying, well, if he wants it, he's got it. That's intern David. David thought, hey, I just heard Opie request something. Yes. I don't care how hard it is, no. how this, we go. <laughs> oh yes. We God. go. If Opie wants Ron Howard, then we got to get Ron Howard here, yes. That's it. Wow. wow that's you amazing. snapped into action. Yes, I did. So... And, and now, 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 there's a... There is a big step <laughs> between hearing someone say they want a guest yes, and getting the guest. Let me tell you something. Correct. I'd love to have Christian Bale. Oh, okay. in studio. Okay. Well, in okay. studio. We're gonna get. We're gonna get him. I'm gonna uh, make it. Yeah. The I new want Terminator dice. movie. <laughs> I mean, the new Terminator movie coming out, Christian Bale. He's okay. been in a lot of my favorite movies. Okay. And I would like to have that. Uh, is it, but you now saying, we got to get him. Is gotta that, get is, now, is that where your job ends? No. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Okay. oh, okay. Right. So now we'll go with the Ron Howard thing. Okay. You said, Opie wants Ron Howard. We're getting Ron Howard. How did you then go from that step of knowing that we want him to actually him coming on the show and your involvement in that. Okay, well, I, well, I thought to myself, how do I go about booking Ron Howard? I'm not a talent booker. Well, no. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. Surprise so there. I said, well, if I'm not a talent booker, then I should approach the person who is the talent booker for hey! the show. What? You put two and two together, yeah. and you got four, my friend. Yes. You knew. <laughs> Go to the booker <laughs> to book a guest. Yes. To request for the booker, if he, ask him if he can book the guest for us. <laughs> 
Could you tell us what you do here? <laughs> you go between the talent and the booker? Is that what I'm led to believe? Why can't the talent go right to the booker? Because we're trying to get the I'm fuck out of here. I'm a people person. <laughs> oh, oh, he's setting up uh, office space. Oh, of course. God uh, damn it. You, you gotta so, see that movie. You gotta see that movie. <laughs> what what I, exactly do you would? What exactly would you say you do here? <laughs> All right. So uh, oh. you, you went to the Booker. Well, I went upstairs. This is the 36th floor, so I had to go to the 37th Whoa! floor. He went to an elevator like, trip. No, I didn't go in the elevator. I walked up the stairs. Holy shit! A lot of people, certain producers around here, yes, they'll wait until the Booker comes. Downstairs, right. David is a man of action. He goes upstairs, upstairs to the Booker. You went to the Booker's office. Well, I searched around the office the upstairs. I didn't know which one is. There's many offices up there. I didn't know which one his office was. <laughs> Please tell me you walked into Mel's office. Oh, going, that be are you the who, Booker? Who are you? Are you the Booker? <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> Please tell me you did that. No, I just walked around aimlessly and didn't, and didn't see Liam anywhere. And I went up to a random per- and I went up to a random person that was sitting at a desk and said, "Do you know where Liam Davenport's office is?" He grabbed uh-huh. Mel's tie. Hey, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, did they know? Um, they they knew where his office was. Yes, but refused to tell you because no, you were told a creep. Me. They oh, told okay. Me. Yeah. And I walked around some more, and I still couldn't <laughs> find the office. I think, and then I asked another person, "You know where Liam Davenport's office is?" And they pointed. And I looked in the office, and he was not in the office. Uh Uh-oh. All right. Look, now a lot of people at that point would have gone, look, I've gone above and beyond here. Ron Howard won't be on the show. I've walked up the stairs. I've (laughs) asked two people for where the booker's office is. Because I wasn't paying attention the first time. (laughs) I'm just going to go downstairs and and call this one a wash. Yeah. But no. No. David... He kept going. He, he, he you, no. you, you are, you're an amazing man, yes. David. So I went, so I went back to the per, the second person who told me where Liam Davenport's office is. And by this point, did they go? Oh fuck! Here he comes again. <laughs> he did make a little, a little sound like that. Something like that. I think he did. Yeah. Why is he telling the story in real time? Oh, I, know, I, know. I am the voice of the listener this today. Is, this is. Ridiculous, Holy by the way, David. Shit. So you go up to the guy again? Yes, correct. And what happens? And I said to the guy... It's like a uh, three-part joke. <laughs> I said to the guy, I'm, I'm looking for uh, Liam Davenport. He's not in his office. If you see him, could you tell him that intern David from the Opie and Anthony show is looking for him? Oh, uh, You gave your title and everything. Yes. Intern David. I'm sure that was impressive to the person, and they and, really took note of what you had to say. Right. And then what? Then what And then happened? he said, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I left. Then he said, okay. Yeah, right. And he left. Sure. Uh, so he walked back down the stairs. Yeah, you got <laughs> it. Jesus Christ. So now, get to the point, the thrilling point of the meeting okay. between you and um, Liam. I'm like, like a half hour, 45 minutes later, uh-huh. I'm down here. Being an intern, and then Liam comes down here and approaches me. No way. And says, I heard you were looking, I heard you've been looking for me. Wow. Oh. Yes. <laughs> David, yes. David just says, I heard you've been looking for me. And then he looked around the room for this approval from everybody, yes. Yes. for this accolades that he's never going to receive. So so you, uh, you, you, ta- you started talking to him. What was that discussion like? Um, well, I explained to him the situation. And you uh-huh. confirmed that you had been looking for him? Yes, I confirmed. Yes, I certainly <laughs> did. You're right. I You're confirmed. right, Jimmy. So, so you said, you, you, you relayed to him Opie's request to have Ron Howard on the program. Well, it was more than that. And I he to- said, it was more oh, than- I know. <laughs> no, it was more than that. I, I told, I retold Liam, I told Liam the story that Opie said on the, on the show about how he... And coming from you, Starbucks. it must have been captivating. Right. Yeah. I and, hope you had a two-hour lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, what, what did he say to you? He said... After you woke him up. <laughs> after I woke him up, he said... By the way, uh, people are saying, especially Mike in Boston, the whole story could have been told in two sentences. Yes. So oh, absolutely. Went upstairs, said, Liam, I need to talk to you. Downstairs, 45 minute, minutes later, Liam came and saw me. The whole upstairs was so unnecessary. <laughs> it was it's so almost un- what happened. <laughs> well, I, I, I connected with Liam, and I just told him that you needed yeah. to... No, he had to walk around, talk <laughs> yes. to people three times to find where he was, leave the message... It's everything. It's amazing. So, it's an amazing story. I'm yeah. surprised uh, the accounting department didn't just grab you. <laughs> oh, I know, right? And take you hostage. <laughs> yeah, you belong up here. Right. <laughs> so, uh, now, where did it come in 
that the actual booking happened and you were part of it? Uh, the actual booking? Uh, yeah. It happened uh, later on in the day, like after this after this show was over already. Mm-hmm. It was pretty much And like, how were you involved in that? Were you in on the conference call? Did you no, uh, I wasn't talk in to Ron the... Howard? You talked to Ron's people. No, I didn't even talk to Ron's people. <laughs> uh-huh. I think that was Liam talked to Ron's people. He had really. Liam, he had Liam do it. So, oh, he had Liam do it. <laughs> yeah, so, you delegated responsibility. So, that's that's good. So how is he responsible for the Ron Howard booking? Thank because you. I, the co-booking because, of Ron Howard. Because I asked Liam if he would try to book if he could try to book Ron now, Howard for our show. Now let me let me ask you something. Uh, hasn't it been a, a blanket thing here over the past, I don't know, year? At least that we want Ron Howard on this show. Oh, yeah. And and hasn't the booker known that we want Ron Howard on the show? How, weren't we talking yeah, about every, the fact that Ron Howard's got a new movie coming out and we would like uh, to have him on the show? I just realized I got to give myself a little credit because when I bumped into him on Columbus Avenue, yes, on that rainy morning, I said, "What hey. time was it, Opie?" It was very early. <laughs> it was probably like how oh. many steps away were you when? <laughs> uh, I said, Ron. I would love to have you on our radio show one day. And look, it's happening today. See? David had nothing to do with it, really, when you so think about it. So now there's three of us that were involved with this book. Here. Wow, this is a massive undertaking. <laughs> so you didn't talk three. to any of the people. <laughs> <There were three. laughs> you talked to Liam, who yep. really knew that we wanted well, Ron Howard. But watch, David is kind of uh, Liam's apprentice, almost. Like, oh, he's learning really. to book talent. Wasn't Ron Howard tentatively booked? That's Before? true. He was tentatively booked, yes. Well, why wouldn't you tell the talent? Why wouldn't I tell the talent? That he was tentatively booked? Because yeah. I was told not to tell the talent because tentatively means tentatively means that he may be. It's not official yet. So I was told not to tell anyone until it was official. Now, how would you know that if you weren't a talent booker? Wait, that's how is he going turn knowing more than we are? That, I mean, that, that, yeah. There's a possibility that Ron Howard's going to be on our show. Yeah, because I didn't find out until Steve woke me up this morning with a, an obnoxious text. Why would he do that, by the way? I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't that info... He's excited. Like, like, yeah, at, at some point... Uh, at 4.30, I, 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 you're going to be here a little after 5 anyway. I'll <laughs> find out when I get right. here... There's no need to wake me. He, he also, Ron Howard, whoa! He also texts uh, Kenny, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Kenny's going to have a few questions, I guess, yeah. for Ron Howard. Go ahead, David. So, that's it? That's yeah, very much it. So, uh, I just I just knew about about him more because I was uh, conferring with Liam every step of the way to see how he was, his uh-huh. progress was going. I guess what we need to ask you is, uh, what did you do that Steve did not do for the Ron Howard booking? I... Approached, I as I said, I approached Liam and asked him if he'd be able to book Ron Howard for the show. Steve did not approach Liam and ask him if he could book him. Did Steve know that he wanted to be booked on the show? I don't think Steve had a clue. No, <laughs> <laughs> probably not. No. But doesn't Steve listen to the show, David? You would think so, wouldn't you? I hope he does. <laughs> you are fucking a gem. <laughs> Yeah. All right. You like David? I love David. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's uh, he's all right in my book, though. All right, David. Well, we continue with intern David because Sam did a backstage with ONA with Jason Ellis. You know who Jason Ellis is, right? Yes. Intern David? Yes, does, I remember uh, him. does a show on Faction every afternoon, and his uh, best of, or not necessarily the, the best of, is uh, played on uh, this channel on the weekends. Now, after he did an appearance on our show, he gave you a little advice on men. Yes, he uh, did. Being a, man. <laughs> being a man. Oh, well, that's a little, that's a little different. Well, he did say yes, he did. So, <laughs> on being a man. Being a man, yes. Okay, and this is how it went down. We might have to stop this a few times. And now backstage with O and A. Here is primetime Sam Roberts. Oh. I'm primetime Sam Roberts, and Opie and Anthony intern David has been moping around the Sirius XM facility as of late, as his internship is about to end, and there is nothing good going on in his life. Luckily, we found expert on all things manly, Jason Ellis in the hall, and got him to give David some life-improving tips. This is our intern David. Now, our intern David is very fond of, uh, what's some of your favorite musical artists? I'm a big fan of uh, musical artists like Beyonce, I like, and I like uh, Britney Spears, and I like all the top 40 artists. Now, David is uh, 26. Yeah. Uh, He lives at home and spends most of his time masturbating in his parents' house while (laughs) listening to music like this. 
What what could you say as far as maybe character building advice for David? I think that it go, it goes it goes both ways. Like I can tell what you guys are doing right now, and I and I think that you know a man who's into Britney Spears and Beyonce. At the end of the day, Beyonce is an excellent singer. She does have sideburns, but she does have an excellent voice. Because I think that men, there's some men out there that go to battle and they fight for the country, and then there's other people that build robots so that they can fight for the country as well. It's people like me and him that unite and make this world a great place. David, you think you can build some robots? Well, there's no, there's no problem with me starting right now. It started nice enough, but after standing in front of intern David for over 60 seconds, his appearance alone was enough to completely frustrate and disgust Jason Ellis. Why don't you thank Mr. Ellis for helping your life? Thank you, Mr. Ellis. I appreciate it. Are you frowning at me right now? <laughs> no, I'm not frowning at you. No way. Why are you looking down at my shoes now? Are you disrespecting me by looking at my feet? Oh, no. No, I'm certainly not. I'm looking right at you. Keep, keep looking at me. Keep watching. Why do you brush your hair off to the side like that? I don't know. I've just been doing go. that. Go. Like, yeah, look at me. All I ever wanted was my hair back. You go, just frizz it, frizz it up, man. That's a thing for a tip for girls. This whole side part thing means you you don't take chances. You do, you're, you're, you're in a box, man. Bust out. You're like in a Rubik's Cube. Your shirt's cool. Get some new kicks, man. Those things are fried. You look like you're going hiking on a picnic or something. <laughs> Just trying to help, man. I got you. I got you. I appreciate the help. <laughs> Good luck, David. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Like most, Jason left the meeting with no faith that intern David will ever accomplish anything of substance. Good luck with that, David. I'm Primetime Sam Roberts, and this has been Backstage with ONA. David, you didn't uh, take his advice. You still got the side poof. Yeah, yeah the side poof. You got the uh, your bad part clothes. is way down on the side. Let me see. You have yeah. too much hair to be parting your hair like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like a comb over part. It starts at the top of your ear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 we should have him spike his hair today. You, you got some a, gel? You should get all wild. Let's all get right. some gel. Yeah. All right. And spike his hair up. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, uh, Maybe give him a, what, what is it called? A manhawk or something? Is Jill here Fohawk. today? No. Oh, uh, see, we need a girl's kind of, uh. What's Steve doing? <laughs> oh, yes. I always wanted to do this. <laughs> Who's got hair product today? Someone's I bet Erock's got a little gel or something. Oh, I'm sure Erock does. <laughs> of course he does. You want to frost it first? I have some of that in my bag. <laughs> I don't think he rock does the frosting anymore. No, he he was though. Who was he ever? Oh, we beat him up. About oh, he that told one. him he knows never to do that again. <laughs> the only frosting now is what he eats on cake. <laughs> <laughs> you should frost his hair with a lawnmower blade. <laughs> Put white paint on it. <laughs> we got one more quickie as far as uh, intern David goes. Uh, he says he likes the pop music. Well, he sang uh, a little Lady Gaga for everybody today. <laughs> You're not a fan of the Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga? No. Nah. Or him saying it. Can't read my, can't read my, no, he can't read my poker face. She's got me like nobody. Can't read my, can't read my, no, he can't read my poker face. She's got me like nobody. Poker face, poker face. Poker face, poker face. I won't tell you that. Kiss or hug you cause I'm bluffing with my muffin I'm not lying, I'm just stunning with my love glue gun in Just like a chick in the casino Take your bank before I pay you out I promise this, promise this Check this hand cause I'm marvelous Can't read my, can't read my No, he can't read my poker face She's got me like nobody Can't read my, can't read my No, he can't read my poker face She's got me like nobody, buddy. We're like producing these two too well, I think. Yeah, these are really getting <laughs> oh my produced God, now. That was good. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, um, we know, David. That's yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear the produced part. Wow. He sounded like. Wow, produced. I'm good. He sounded like that old song, uh, Putting on the Ritz. Anybody? Oh, oh. <laughs> kind of that. Who did that? Taco? Uh, yeah, I think it was Taco. Very Putting good. Putting on the Ritz. Putting on the ranch. All right, very, very good appearance this morning. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, good. For we didn't learn your much, last but... appearances. <laughs> I guess you sort of co co booked Ron Howard. Sort of. What What do you suggest with the dice thing? You said you suggest he should wait. Dice should wait. Yes. Until Ron Howard is done. Correct. We'll make sure we tell Dice that little tidbit. Yeah. Okay. But I mean. Just so everybody has the correct idea, David was outside the studio, not so much taking pride in the booking itself, but just taking pride in the fact that he thinks he's outshined Steve C. 
well. Which, I mean, it's not hard to do. And I think, <laughs> and I think he's taking something I t told him very yeah. seriously. Yeah. What, what's that, Sam? Well, you, uh, <laughs> I think on Friday, offhandedly, when you said this, when you said the Ron Howard thing, David approached you while you were going to the bathroom and said, I'm, I'm going to get Ron Howard on the show. I, I'm going to go talk to Liam. And you just trying to get back into the studio, <laughs> brushed him off by saying, hey, you're doing better than Steve already. And oh, so, uh, so he took that to heart. Oh, and, says, you know. yeah. and David, yeah. how have you been doing? Very well. Better than? Better than Steve C. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, you, should, you should have a t-shirt made. <laughs> better than Steve C. <laughs> I'd have to print out uh, a lot yeah, of them. We need, we need to buy, buy those in bulk. <laughs> uh, uh, shut up. <laughs> okay, buy them. <laughs> well, we'll have shirts. <laughs> Thank you. Very good one. Th Thank you, yes. <laughs> My improv skills are wonderful. We should buy them in bulk. <laughs> yes, you should. Thank you. <laughs> what? Uh, Psychotic from uh, Wackbag uh, writes, make David wear shit like Rob Halford. <laughs> Ooh. And then gives a website where you can see all the fun stuff spike that it up, Rob leather. Halford's been wearing lately. Yeah, we got to spike his hair up. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Make, can we rip your shirt and shit? Not, mm. and, and put some holes in your jeans? Not, mm. <laughs> Yeah, with, look at the look he, he makes this look like, oh my god, I gotta do it for the show, but I don't want to do this at all. And I, because every, all kinds of things going through that head. Big poofy haired head. Are all you right. wearing that thing? I saw an infomercial for the bump. <laughs> Wait, what's yeah, the yeah, bump? Yeah, yeah. What, it's some that? plastic thing that chicks brush their hair forward and they put it like on the skull, on the skull cap like uh, of their head, the, yeah. the, the crown. Okay. And then they brush the hair over it and it gives that old 60s style uh, kind of bump. Oh. It's called the bump. You look like you're wearing the bump on your head. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what you got under there? The bump. <laughs> he looked all week for a Potsy Weber wig. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all jealous with all that hair of his. Jesus. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. That shit will fall out eventually. Uh, uh, yeah. Almost everybody. Yes. Jewish guys, uh, <laughs> usually when they're younger, do have a lot of hair. Oh, my like God. Like that. And then uh, once you get a little older, it gets to be that horseshoe yeah. hair yeah. thing. And Do you think he has a nice harvest area? Uh, yeah, he'll have a good harvest area. Uh, yeah, and he could cover it up with a yarmulke. So uh, you won't even have to worry about it. Oh. Do you wear the yarmulke? Do you wear it a lot? No, not too often. No, because no? no. some people wear it all the time. I never understood like the bobby pins in there, going yeah. to school and everything. Yeah, yeah. The bobby pins are just—they just put it there in their hair to make sure that, that the yarmulke doesn't fall off their head. Really? I <laughs> yeah. thought it had religious it. significance. The bobby pins? No. That <laughs> <laughs> clears me up on that Literal one. Thank David. you, David. <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to pick up chicks wearing a yarmulke. A yarmulke? Yeah. Well, thought, Jewish I, girls, you get. I yeah, but I always felt bad for the guys. I'm like, man, it's it's tough out there to begin with, and now you're going to these bars with a yarmulke on with bobby pins. It's and like, they know you have money yeah. though. They think you're a Jewish yeah. guy. They probably think well, you have a good that's job. True. It's yeah. a dumb observation, obviously, but right. I always thought that like you know, you ever go to one made of those? It a little harder for some of the guys out there. Do you ever go to one of those Jewish singles weekends? You ever hear about those? I heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. You never went? No. You Why ever think there? you're gonna? You meet a nice Jewish girl, maybe, your family will like one her day. and stuff. You Is can't be bringing home. Uh, a shiksa, right? No. No. <laughs> What's that it? That's a uh, regular old uh, non-Jew girl. A regular broad? Regular, uh, yeah, non-Jew broad, this day and age. You look <laughs> down upon us because we're not <clears throat> Jews? The family does, right? They they, they want it. you with a Jewish girl. Of course they, they do, do, yes. Yeah, nice Jewish you're girl. Not gonna, you're not going to marry a Jew, though, right? Get, nice Probably girl, will, settle yes. down. Why don't you settle down? Why are you going to marry a Jew? Because you have to? Yeah. Or you want to? <laughs> yeah. No, he has to. He's cut down his no, um, I have to. His choices. Oh, boy. What if there is the hottest girl and she falls head over heels in love with you and she is a horrid, horrid Catholic? Uh-oh. Because, you know. That's no good. That'd be a know? big problem. Would you, um, would you turn Catholic? I know a lot of people turn Jewish to uh, get into relationships. They do. But, but uh, convert. Would you convert to Catholicism over a girl? I don't know. That'd be a tough one. I don't know. I'd have to really would, think would hard about it. Would your family disown you? Maybe they wouldn't like that one bit. Yeah. No. You do know it is the real religion, though, right? 
No. <laughs> what? 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 No. No. Don't, no. Don't make us waterboard you until you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David. All right, you David. are you are a card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He agrees. Yeah. Yes, I'm yeah. a card. Yeah. All, All right, right, David. Thank I'll you. Go, um, I'll go look for some gel. You know what? Yeah, look for some gel. I will. And Christian Bale. And Christian and Bale. And Christian Bale, that too, yes. If Christian Bale, Terminator Salvation comes out. I want Christian Bale sitting oh. at the console right next to our good friend Jimmy Norton. I'll get right on that. that. Thank hey, you. Uh, David and Bobo, We're, you're doing a David and Bobo show on Friday, your last day? Oh. If he comes in, yes. And, if he comes in, and, of course and, he will. And Bobo on his Twitter last night. Do we have his uh, Twitter? It's I don't follow Bobo on know, my Twitter. Go Twitter, figure. I think it's Mr. <laughs> Met. It's Mr. Met 8. <laughs> M-R-M-E-T number 8. Mr. Met 8. Is his Twitter, yes. He's already advertising. <laughs> he, he, he's already advertising for a new David on his Twitter. Look at that. Really? Can you find that one, Danny? Where is it? Oh, right there at the top. I'm sorry. The search for the new David is on. Bobo needs the new sidekick ASAP. Uh-oh. <laughs> I need a new sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of stuff does he Twitter? Give me a little little sample of some of the stuff there, Danny. The next Twitter says, yo, <clears throat> he's talking directly to Opie. Yo, Opie, how about having me and David eat sliders until one of us makes... A, I can't hold it fart. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> now he's giving show ideas on Twitter. That's oh, fantastic. No, like show ideas for him and uh, David. Yes. Now. Yeah, all right. Iron Sheik really needs to wear, that's W H E R E, depends. <laughs> wear. <Yeah. laughs> this is one of the best moments on the show of all time. Lol, smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Let's see. Yeah, he's a pisser. Oh, he's doing Jersey, Jersey jokes. Uh, the swine flu has hit my hometown of Queens hard. Wendy, look out. It also hit Jersey. A oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and he spells a oh, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's his <laughs> signature little bit. So, mm -hmm. All right. Good Bobo. Good boy. Good Bobo. Well, Good hopefully Bobo. he'll come in uh, Friday and we'll hear uh, what will be the last. Do you, you have any plans? I mean, we've asked you this before, but any plans on what you're going to be doing after you leave here? I mean, this has been a big part of your life, I think. It certainly right? has, yes. Yeah. Uh, what you're taking away from it, where you're going, what do you want to continue on this road of uh, broadcasting? What What are you doing, David? We'll see. I would like to continue and stay in the, in the radio broadcasting field, definitely. Yeah, so. so would we. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah. But so, any plans? We'll see. Just... Just what press harder. So keep, that means no. No, not yet. Yeah, keep no looking for plans. Keep, not immediate. Just keep looking for jobs anywhere I can in this field. You keep sleep looking. in late for a little while, though? Maybe on the first day. His, pa his parents have threatened to throw him out of the house oh, very shit. quickly. So. Oh, shit. So you got to be pounding that pavement, my friend. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, I hear sir. you. All, All right, right, David. Sending out those resumes. Yeah. Yep. Good deal. Now you have this great uh, addition to a resume. That's true. The Owen A Show. Yes. Yeah. Well, congrats, David, um, and uh, we'll see you uh, later. He, he has a new Friday, skill to add whatever. to his resume, too. What? Talent booking. Talent booker, yeah. of course. Oh, it's yeah. so hard to get David out of the studio. <laughs> Anyone else notice? I know, it There's is. There's no easy way to wrap up you know why? David interview. He doesn't leave. It's really <laughs> like, weird. Like, he stands there and looks at you. You have to actually have to tell him, <laughs> leave. He's just annoyed he's, now. He's like fumes. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 just... I went from loving having him in, and now I'm just annoyed uh, that he's still standing there. Well, you said... Yeah. Well, like David, well, I was going to say, you said goodbye to me, Opie, and then Anthony said, no, you're going to do a last David and Bobo show? No, and the that, conversation we going. understand all that, and then then Anne was trying to wrap up, and then I jumped back in, because it's just this weird, we don't know how to end the interview with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you stand there and make like that smile and that face and everything, and... It's so much material. Like, you're not leaving. You're still not leaving. <laughs> because you're talking about me right to me, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kenny, oh, Kenny, just, Kenny just threw it out. Wow. <laughs> Kenny fucking goon armed him right out of here. Not talking to you anymore there. Headphones ripped off his head and out he went. Yep. Hey, can we get intern David? I guess they did his makeover. Oh, it was uh, intern David makeover. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for Ron Howard to go from one studio to the other here. Down the green mile. Jesus. Oh, my God. Dead no. man walking. What the fuck Dead man it? walking here. Speaking of the fun, looks like Bowser. Yes, he does look like <laughs> Bowser. Oh no! Don't like the fun. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. You're th- oh, my God. You gave him gang <laughs> tattoos on his cheek? He's got the it. two tears? <laughs> you gave him... Uh, you can't put tear tattoos Sharpie on gang him. tattoos. Oh, and then he's got David <laughs> D written on his knuckles. Yep. There's only one D. Oh, spiderweb tat. And... Uh, what are, what are the other ones? A skull and crossbones, and then a mom heart tattoo. Well, the other one. Oh, oh sorry, I can't hear you. That mic is off. How are you? Good. Uh, good. Ah, uh, there you go. Wow, he's almost doing the Bowser kind of. On the other arm, there's a lightning bolt, and oh. you can see his new nickname. Show him your other arm, David. Oh. David. Lightning. Oh, lightning. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> David Jewish Lightning. That's when they burn the place down to get the insurance money. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You're not looking tough though. You're smiling when you take the picture. Now he's <laughs> shananaing. Well, can you see the chunks of gel in his hair? That's tough. There are chunks of gel yes. in that hair. That, how hard is it to get that puff out? Well, I actually decided to just dump like half the jar of gel in his hair and let it sit on top and then I, and then I sprayed him with hairspray and then, oh. I, then I told him to go talk to Troy because Troy knows more about hair gel than I do. Did you cut the sleeves off his really nice white t-shirt? Yeah, he was his wearing... His parents are going to kill you guys. <laughs> I asked permission if we could cut the sleeves off his shirt so he would look cooler and he reluctantly said yes. Who drew the uh, tats? That was me and Troy combined. Oh, okay. I could see you did the skull and crossbones, <laughs> yes. and he did this, the heart. That's correct. Yeah, I could tell because there's such different artistry there. Yours looks like an infant well, drew it. I did the teardrops, too. Yeah. Oh. On his eye. And and what does that represent, that you've killed somebody? Well, either that you've committed a homicide or you've done a bit in prison. Right. Oh. I thought you had a. Had so we're disrespecting some some guys out there today. Some Great, gang. David oh, is. One David will walk out of the street and just get his ass handed to yeah, him. No kidding. <laughs> the spider web also apparently is a biker thing that means you've killed someone. Oh, okay. I heard that was rumor. That's what I heard. Uh, that's rumor. Yep. Go to Snopes. I know it's rumor. Um, just means yeah, you have spiders on you. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> spiders on your elbows. Means you got bit by a spider in the middle of the night. Well, wow. you could stop flexing. It's radio. I know. <laughs> he's flexing and not talking. He's, he's flexing. <laughs> he's in the bed shape. Ago. When you make uh-huh. a muscle, his ass cheeks actually tighten up. Like his whole body just. Like... <laughs> well, what do you, what do you think, David? Look. Could you take your glasses off? Let me see what you look like without your glasses. Maybe a little tougher. <laughs> he's growling and not looking tough at all but I think you could not look tough but I think he feels tougher he does yeah, he feels different he definitely feels tougher well, he's yeah. got a different attitude about himself here how do you feel David? tough I feel very tough err <laughs> he's erring let me see the tattoo on the eye the uh yeah the uh the drop Oh, like he's that. making crazy eyes. <laughs> yeah. How well, long do you think you'd la- how, oh, he is? He's fucking David Lightning. How how long do you think you'd last in prison? In prison? Oh no, <laughs> probably not too long. <laughs> yeah, huh? Bef- no. Before what would happen? Or I'd get knocked on the ground or beaten up or something. What What do you think would happen to you in the shower in prison? In the shower? Yeah. What do you think would happen? Probably get punched in the face or something, get beaten up. And then what? Mm. And then molested or mutilated or something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Give yourself a bell. Yes. <laughs> it, was, it was suggested that we do the tattoos with dry erase marker, and that way after the show we could just wash them off. But the dry erase marker was all the way on the other side of the office. So, so I why just, bother? I did the Sharpie. Sharpie comes off so easy off your skin. Especially when you color it in on the face. Yeah, yes. yeah. I like Danny's picture he's got up. He looks like one of the Gotti boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sort of. <laughs> Oh, there you all go. right. Well, that's all we got there, David. Thank you. All right, sure. What else are we gonna do? You're gonna you? walk around like that the whole day now, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, the whole day. You kind of fit in this place, though. Everyone's got a cool. Yeah, hip a lot of look. people looking like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just like this, yeah. with, with gang tattoos and. Who looks like that, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people walk. A bunch of the bunch of the producers walking around. How about you name one? One guy that looks almost I don't know like. I don't know what their names like. are. Well, as soon as you find one, drag him in here. Yeah. And go. I look like this guy. And okay. We'll, and we'll meet a new person here. Okay, that's my task. Okay, sure. All right. Thanks, David. Sure.
We got ETA on Ron Howard, or uh, we're still waiting? All right. Well, the boys put this uh, together. We had Eddie Money in studio. Certainly did. He was great. Was uh, are you going to go see that one-man show of his in Dix Hills? Uh, at some point. <laughs> I, I have his phone number. I could call him and get tickets. Oh, I got a lot. Of, okay. I saw a lot of people kind of walking by. I thought, oh, uh, think, uh, yeah, usually you just, just start seeing people arrive and then finally. Yeah, yeah. Then the you see himself. and you go, hey, I know that face. That's when you know you're talking to like an A-lister. Yeah. A lot of a lot of our guests, they come by themselves. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's they just kind of the, that's wander the difference in. between us and other shows. They have trouble at security. <laughs> right. Sorry, guys. I would have been here an hour ago. But yeah. They didn't believe that I was here to do an interview. <laughs> but uh, lately, getting some of the A-listers where you, you see know. the entourage. Kind of nice. The entourage is a is a interesting sight, yeah, to yeah. say the least. All right, when Ron walks in, we should just go, what? <laughs> yeah, that'll busy. work. Ah, uh, you're interrupting. Uh, intern what David is outside the happened? studio. And Who? Intern David decided that you needed to wait, and we had to get Ron Howard on first. And I figure you might have a problem with that dice, so I'm bringing I, David in. I really in. didn't. We this is, but he's so the he's one that the decided. Lion. So you might want to look at Who? this kid. Well, okay, not me. David, why did you decide that Ron Howard should be on the show before Andrew Dice Clay? Why did I decide that? Yeah, he's right here. Tell him yeah. to his face. I like how you repeat the question like you're being like. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's thank what you. You're doing interviews. It certainly is. Yes. Go ahead. Tell I him. decided that because. Uh, Ron Howard, you're a big because you Opie are a big fan of of uh, Ron Howard, and uh, I'm just named after the guy. Actually, I do like his work, but uh, you I know, know you're just named after yeah. him. But it was important to you to meet him, and I'm not saying any, I'm not trying to be rude to Dice, but he's been on the show numerous times, and you know oh, him. Oh, oh, you know shit, him already, so no, you didn't. Oh, you didn't do no, that you did. So nice. I thought it was I thought it would be important oh, for no, you guys. To me. What's your oh, name again? I'm right. David. Uh, By the way, it doesn't say, look like this every day, Dice. We, no, we try okay. to do a little makeover. Say on. what you said. It's okay. You'll feel better. Yeah, that's what I was saying, yeah. Go ahead. Say what you're feeling. Don't be holding back on. Yeah, you're holding back a little. No, I'm not holding back. That's, no, I'm not. All right, what was it again? I just said it. You really think what? No, I was. I, what? <laughs> See, he's all no, flustered it's okay. for the first he's, time. He's right, what flustered. I said was that I thought because uh, Ron Howard was a very important interview and that you wanted to... And Dice isn't important? No, I didn't say he's not show. important. No, oh, why would you say that? Figuratively, you said that. Right you what said the fuck? That. He's right here. He's I didn't say he's not important. I said he's less... I meant he's less... And Ron Howard's more important because he's... Oh, you're saying that he's oh, more important. Oh, oh, you say that, Dice. Oh, oh. Well, Dice would you know understand what? that, I would have to agree with that on a certain level. Ah. Okay. I mean, look at the films the man does. Uh, yeah, that's Da Vinci true. Code, Mission Impossible. Yeah. I don't know if he did Mission <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. He didn't work on that long. Uh, I don't think so. No, but, he's uh, got his hand in everything. Apollo 13. <laughs> Apollo. Did Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. When when they landed on the moon? Uh, they never landed no, that there. One uh, no, that one didn't. No, but he's done. Yeah. No. They had a major no, problem. In the film next. world, yeah. things like what Fort about Bob? Lane. What about Ford Fairlane? No, oh, that wasn't him. You ever see? It wasn't <laughs> no. him. Who did that one? He had his hands in everything. You said though. Well, maybe he did. You never know. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, did you okay. ever see you're, Ford Fairlane? You're entitled to me? No, oh, I don't know. I don't know. know what that is. No. Good movie. But do me a favor. I'll no. rent it. Yeah, yeah rent it. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. Let's. Uh, what do you want a picture of? I don't know. He's I don't rich. know. Like the whole thing. All right. The whole thing. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're having fun. Dice, here. your camera looks really old. No, is it old? No, it's it's amazing this camera. All right, it had kind yeah. of like a zoom. Yeah. Is that good? good? Yeah, it looks really good. There's no Does flash. it look good? Megapixels. Yeah. <laughs> megapixels. Eight. 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 Right. right now we're just taking pictures. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. This is now what happens? Photographs. Yeah. But David, why are you being disrespectful to Dice? I mean, you know he's a friend, yeah. and he's been he's been I'm a not friend being for many, many years. At all. You're saying What's someone that? one guest is more important. You're all saying... of our guests are of equal importance. No, it's... Some of them do <laughs> different things. <laughs> no, Ron Howard's a behind the scenes. Oh, but yeah. no more important than you is what I'm saying. You guys are d two different things. But as far as guests go, you're all important. <laughs> Stop with the fucking stupid smile, David. Jesus. <laughs> Is that it, David? Because we're in the middle of our, our great interview with Andrew Dice. By the way, Dice, if you didn't know, well, I just want to inform you. David yeah. is of the Jewish persuasion. Yes. Uh -huh. I don't know Good if you could tell him. just by looking at him. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Say something. Hi, Dice. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put this down so I can go back and do 
He's, right, he's, let's uh, see this one later. He's videotaping yeah. uh, with his, uh, with his yeah, camera. Yeah, you know. This is, this his is camera. technology. Then don't you apologize? you got to be on the cutting edge of technology. He said that he agreed. He's being humble. He said he agreed. You know what? He's, 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 being, you know what he's it being nice. You, you kind of insulted him, and I think you owe him an apology. Well, but he really didn't. Little, I think. Not a little bit. 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 You want to know the truth? A little bit. A little bit. He's a young guy. He's a he's a uh, Ron Howard fan, obviously. Mm. And he doesn't in, know the in a lot of Ron ways, Howard. we need a guy like Ron Howard. Well, of course we do. You know do. what I mean? It's an institution. Yeah, I mean, Ron knows. You don't put a guy like Ron in front of the camera. So you give him a, you know, but because he's had a tremendous history doing like. Why don't you put a guy like Ron Howard in front of the well, camera? Well, you know, he, he did all that. He did Happy Days. Uh, right? He got to play the son. Yeah. Mayberry. And Fonzie's and friend. Yeah. And, yeah, all the way back to his childhood. And here's a guy, <laughs> you know, you know, he ain't George Clooney. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I mean, if Ron Howard starred in, in Benjamin Pitt, People be running from the deer. <laughs> Benjamin Pitt? Pitt? Yeah, whatever that. Well, Benjamin Pitt. <laughs> Benjamin Pitt. Yeah. Benjamin Remember Bo that? No. What is it, David? Oh, Benjamin Button? Yeah. Oh, Benjamin Pitt. It's Benjamin, case no, Benjamin, yeah, Benjamin yeah. Pitt. It's Benjamin Pitt from now on. Yeah, now. yeah, of course it is. I understood, I never what, I understood what he was saying. The stupidest the way, movie I ever saw. Thank you. Another it. great comedy. Way though. overrated. Yeah, come funny. Stup Hysterical. You see, you Stupidly see. Stupidly overrated, that movie. You see yeah. Benjamin, who's playing Pitt. In the movie, <laughs> yeah, start out like like a little monster baby, like <laughs> ET, right? yeah, and you know he's getting, but he's like two hundred and ten years old. He's getting younger and younger, and then he falls for this chick, uh -oh. right? And now he gets like better. Now all of a sudden you see him on a sailboat, and it it should have just said at that moment, pit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. With the hand holding the sail, and now he gets into it with this chick. Because she was a baby growing up, and he was an old man getting, yeah, getting younger. younger. So they kind of so now that now it gets to that level. Uh oh, you know where I mean? Where where you know he could crack it open for her. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. You know, and he puts it in. Crack it open. Yeah, for you know her. what I mean. Of course, it's like he I fucking do. breaks in there a little, right? Yeah, yeah. And he becomes a husband, and then it gets to the point because he's getting younger that he goes, you know. I'm getting too young for you because she's feeling, well, I might too old for you. Yeah. You know, and, and he's going, well, yeah, kind of. And I'm going, what the <laughs> fuck, though? Most guys like all the chicks. Really? Yeah. The experience. No. Yeah. Fuck the experience. No, I'd rather but have it, a, uh, ass like a snare drum. All right, well, let me just finish. Fucking experience. <laughs> No, but when a guy's younger, he likes an older chick, oh, and then okay. you get older, you right. like the younger. That's Very how it good. Works. So anyway, so Pitt's getting too young. And he takes off on the motorcycle, right? All of a sudden, he shows up again. I guess he traveled all over, and he's thinking about this chick's box. Uh-oh. Right? He comes back, and she's married to some other fucking guy, right? Because you know them. God forbid <laughs> they don't have a cock wrapped around their fucking <laughs> neck every day of the week. These little fucking slobs, right? <laughs> of course. God forbid they're not gagging. <laughs> Shut the fuck up already and swallow it. They look like they got rabies, these chicks, when they blow you today. Anyway, yeah, with the foam falling out of them. These motherfuckers, I love them. You know, like God all the bless. drool and the foam these days. So anyway, so now he comes back, and she's like, well, you know, you can stay with me. You know, so now he moves in with the chick, and now it cuts to, like, a scene where he's, like, like 10 you know, and she's like the mommy now. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? And she don't even do nothing for him anymore. It's not like he forgot that she was whacking his bag. Right, right. It's not that he forgot she was sucking on his fucking dick. All right, he's a kid, but he still has needs. He remembers <laughs> going in his room at night. Fucking, you know. <laughs> he, still got, he still has the memories. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, experience and, and age. He should be doing movie reviews. Yeah, no, well, this <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah, dice his movie reviews. <laughs> Go in his room, whack wow. his bag under the blanket. Do something nice. This is your child. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're going to get mad at him because he's now too young for you? And then at the end of the fucking movie, I'm laughing hysterical, and this guy's yelling at me in the theater. And I'm going, do me a favor, just look the other way. You know this is a fucking goof, this movie. You know, everybody, try, uh, you know, with the turnaround when they give you the look. Yeah, yeah. Like they're going to kill you, but it's never happened ever. <laughs> Nobody ever really gets up. 
you know, they try to kill it with a look the, like, the you look, know, like, hey, I, like I, don't I, enjoy the movie. Yeah. And now she's holding Pitt, supposedly. He's like a little baby in a blanket now. I'm going, you know, at least pat his balls with some powder. <laughs> you still and she wouldn't even needs. fucking do that. And that's needs. why he goes and dies. He's got no reason to live no more. Yeah. It's like, after all that... He just uh, what, shrivels up as a baby, and that's it? It's the funniest you, you fucking movie it? of the no. year. It's ridiculous. No. It is the funniest I movie. I need to see it's that. And ridiculous. I would have to say the guy that wrote it is one of the most demented minds in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, I don't bad. give a fuck who he is, what he's done. They go, oh, what great directing. This guy's a sick fuck. And you'd have people watching him. Yeah. With that kind of mindset. Oh, you think maybe he's got uh, issues? Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Does. Yeah. He's behind you still. Oh. I thought you didn't One like second. people behind hey, him. A... David, didn't you what hear you when he did this to Danny? He doesn't like people behind him. Yeah. Oh, no? No, move a little over. All right, move over. Could you teach him something, Dice? Look at him. He's a little... There you go. Kind of do pathetic. you like working on the o and show? Sure, I do. I like it all. Yeah, it was good. What's your job exactly? Intern. Did you see Benjamin Pitt? No, I haven't seen it yet. Nope. Did you see the Da Vinci Code? Yes, I saw that one. Yeah. And what'd you think? Very good movie, Da Vinci Code. I enjoyed it. Very good. It's not funny. No, it's not a funny movie at all. No. I walked out. Ah. Uh, I like when Hanks is funny. Oh yeah. 